Hello and welcome to a new video. This video will be a little bit different than some of the other ones that you've seen from me so far and that's because I will be painting this coyote skull from life in gouache. A little bit about this skull. I got this on my partner and I's very first trip to Portland together and we visited a store called Paxton Gate that sells all kinds of natural science type things like skulls and bugs and plants and all kinds of things like that. Really cool store. We also went to the Blick store up there and I got a lot of hardboard and some gesso and ground that I was planning to use later. And so a few months later I decided I really wanted to paint the skull in gouache on my new hardboard and I put about two coats of gesso on it and about four coats of some watercolor ground. And while my partner was on a fishing trip with his folks, I stayed at home and tried to paint this thing. And it didn't turn out very well. So I'll show you a before picture so here's what it looked like before, and it was pretty bad. As you can see from this close-up, I did a lot of the things that you really shouldn't do with gouache on this one painting. Now, to be fair, it was my first gouache painting, and you might notice that the shape is pretty nice, but I didn't wait for the layers to dry, so when I was putting new layers on it, the previous layers were lifting up, and I didn't block out the shadows very well. I thought that I could just put the shadows directly on the skull and everything would be okay. And everything was not okay. I was very embarrassed by this skull, and I refused to even show it on my social media accounts because it was just so bad in my opinion. And I was also kind of afraid of using gouache afterwards. It took me almost a year before I felt confident enough using gouache entirely by itself, but for most of the time after I only used it for highlights and just really small details, and most of the time I used watercolor and colored pencil. So there you have it. This video is actually going to be a redemption for me, so I will be painting this same skull from life and you'll get to see the entire process from sketch to finished painting. So without further ado, let's get started. So for the start of this, I am just lightly sketching out the shape of the coyote skull using a mechanical pencil with some regular lead. And I'm trying to find out what the basic shapes of the coyote skull are before I actually start painting them. I also go over the top of the skull with a um, mechanical pencil using blue lead just to figure out exactly where the lines are. So here I am doing that. I use a lot of different lines when I'm sketching, and so this helps me figure out the exact line to use when I'm painting. The teeth are actually really hard on these guys. So then I seal my sketch with some matte medium, and that prevents the sketch from lifting off when I'm painting over the top of it, it prevents any kind of smudging. So then I wait for that to dry all the way before moving on to the next part. And I'm mixing some ultramarine burnt sienna and yellow ochre together, along with some titanium white to make a warm gray for the background. Then I'll be adding some more matte medium to that. And this will prevent any kind of lifting of the paint layers. I decided to go for a nice, neutral, warm gray so that I could match the color of the paper and allow the coyote skull to come forward in the painting. 
So I start off with the brightest part on the coyote. I'm doing a little bit of titanium white and yellow ochre together. And then I'm using a, the same mixture of ultramarine and burnt sienna for the shadows. As you can see, I'm actually blocking in the shadows. Unlike the original piece, I just kind of tried to put the shadows over the top. And I'm adjusting the background a little bit more to make it a more cool gray so that the coyote skull will actually come forward in the painting. I'm touching up the areas inside the mandibles and the orbit with some brighter yellow ochre that gives the skull the illusion that it is kind of glowing from within. And the next part is I'm adding the midtones. So it's pretty much the same color as the shadows but with a little bit more titanium white mixed in. And I'm trying to really match those colors to get the form and the dimension of the coyote skull down. That mid-tone color that I mixed up really helps blend the highlight and the shadows together without going directly over the top of them. So at this point in the painting, there's a bit of a push and pull between the darks and the lights. So you will notice that I'm adding some shadows in some places and then going back and adding some highlights in other places. And for the teeth, I want them to be a slightly cooler gray than the rest of the bone on the skull. And that is because the teeth are covered in, in enamel that gives them that kind of cooler, shi shiny color. So I'm adding a little bit more blue to those. I'm also adding in just small little details like the sutures that join the zygomatic arch together and going back and adding some of the lines for the nasal bones and the premaxilla. And at this point I'm just kind of going about adding more details, adding some more warmth to places that I want to come forward, adding more cool colors to places that I want to be pushed backwards, and touching up a little bit of the background. The teeth I had to go over several times to get them to look nice and shiny and white. At this point I start adding a little bit more warmth to the cranium and to the zygomatic arch as well as the orbit. It's also important that I'm adding more highlights to places that are going to stand out more. And so here's the finished piece. And you'll notice that it's a huge improvement over what I previously showed you. So I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please give us a like, a comment, or maybe even subscribe. And I hope to see you next time.